Many of us have experienced or at least heard about the infamous gamma shift that happens on Max. What you see in DaVinci Resolve looks different from the export viewed in QuickTime. Upload it to YouTube and you have something different yet again. And this isn't just an issue with Resolve, but also Adobe Premiere Pro or any other app for that matter that isn't configured correctly for Apple's color managed display pipeline. Final Cut Pro users, on the other hand, don't have any of these issues because it's made by Apple, who has ensured everything works as expected. This topic, as you can see, is quite a rabbit hole, but I'll try and explain the basics of why all of this is happening. But that in a moment. First, let's see how to set up color management correctly in DaVinci Resolve to avoid the issue of this gamma shift. Step 1. Open up DaVinci Resolve Preferences. Select the System tab and the General category. Check Use 10-bit precision in viewers if available, and use Mac Display Color Profiles for viewers. You can now hit Save. Step 2. Open up Project Settings, Color Management, and set the color science to DaVinci YRGB. Not Color Managed, not ACES, just DaVinci YRGB. Set Timeline Color Space to your Working Color Space, in my case DaVinci Wine Gamut Intermediate, and finally the output color space to Rec 709A. Not Rec 709, you have to have A at the end. If you have U separate color space and gamma selected, you should choose Rec 709 as the color space and Rec 709A as the gamma. Step 3. Set up color management using nodes and make sure to set your output to what your display expects. In my case, Rec 9 and Gamma 2.4. If node-based color management is something new for you, you can watch this video to catch up. Step 4. When exporting on the deliver page under advanced settings, make sure to set both the color space and gamma tags to same as project. This will take what we chose from the project settings, Rec 9 and Rec 9 a which will result in the video file getting the correct 111 NCLC metadata tag. Alternatively, setting the color space tag to Rec 9 and the gamma tag to either Rec 9A or just Rec 9 will also work correctly, producing the needed 111 tag. And finally, if you have a MacBook Pro with the Liquid Retina XDR display, Apple Studio Display or Apple Pro Display XDR, you should select the HDTV Video Display preset in the macOS display settings. This makes your display match a Rec 09 Gamma 2.4 reference monitor. Within reason. After all, we're not calibrating the screen. And that's it. If you have followed all the steps correctly, what you see in Resolve should now match an exported file viewed in QuickTime and uploaded to YouTube. But now let's move on to why all of this is needed. macOS has its own color management system under the hood called ColorSync. Simply put, this makes sure that your display shows colors correctly, as it knows what your display's color space is and the color space of the media being displayed, be it for YouTube, QuickTime or DaVinci Resolve. Without it, all colors would look incorrect for both images and video because they would be mapped to displays selected or native gamut. For example, a Rec. 709 video on a P3 display would look overly saturated, and all recent Apple displays have exactly that, a P3 gamut. So our first step of enabling use Mac display profiles for viewers is telling Resolve to work with ColorSync. Otherwise, we wouldn't stand a chance of getting things to match. Unfortunately, this system isn't perfect, as it relies on NCLC metadata tags. NCLC is short for Non-Constant Luminance Coding. These tags consist of three numbers. The first one indicates the color primaries, aka a gamut. The second, a transfer function. And the third, a color matrix. They are there to indicate what color space a video is encoded in. Now, YouTube, as most of our online video platforms, tag their SDR videos as 111 for color sync. This is also what Apple recommends doing. That's because Gamma 2.4 is the standard display encoding curve for SDR video, and the middle one is meant to signify that. I say meant to, as there isn't actually a display encoding curve associated with the value 1, but 
only direct 9 o ETF, meaning the cameras transfer function. So 111 is what we have to match with Resolve and QuickTime in order to have a matching image to YouTube. Also, if you were to upload a video to YouTube with differing tags, such as 141, which you get with Gamma 2.2 on a Windows machine, there's a good chance YouTube will apply an unintended gamma adjustment to your video and we don't want that. Also, the thing is, if you select Rex09 and Gamma 2.4 in project settings, Resolve actually sends over a different NCLC metadata tag of 121. This is for legacy reasons and it no longer helps us with modern Mac systems. As such, choosing Rex 9 a is the only way of getting the necessary 111 tag sent to ColorSync for the GUI preview of Resolve to be correct. It's also the reason why we cannot use project level color management, meaning DaVinci YRGB color managed, as that forces us into the incorrect 121 tag if you use Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. Finally, this same 111 tag is included in the video file upon export, as long as you have the correct color space and gamma tags on the deliver page, and it will be read for QuickTime displaying the same image we saw in the Resolve GUI viewer. And as mentioned before, YouTube will tag their SDR streams as 111 for color sync. As long as the free match, Resolve, QuickTime and YouTube, we will see the same image between all three applications on the same display. Now, the reason for having to change the display preset to HDTV video is because with the default profile, Apple expects you to use your device in a bright surround and thus uses a different gamma curve. 1.961 to be precise. The HDTV preset has a gamma correction of 1.22, which brings the net gamma up to 2.4. Whether the default of 1.961 is the right thing to do is up for debate, and feel free to debate that in the comments below. I'd like to thank Thomas Berglund and Thatcher Freeman for providing some helpful guidance on this topic. I have also put additional resources in the description, and if you have any additional questions or feedback on the video, I'd love to see all of that in the comments as well. I'm Gaur, see you next time.